We like a scary game here at Game Ranks. And as far as horror goes, there's a bunch coming out this year. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, horror games we're looking forward to in 2020. Just as a quick disclaimer, there are a few titles we won't be mentioning. It will be conspicuous because these are highly anticipated titles. Firstly, Ghostwire Tokyo is not coming until 2021. Dying Light 2 has of course been delayed indefinitely. We don't really know anything beyond that. And Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines 2, while a highly anticipated game, isn't really a horror game per se. Starting off at number 13 is Someday You'll Return a psychological horror game which sets you in Moravian forests that you swore you would never return to, hence the title of the game. What happened is your daughter, who has run away before, has disappeared. You've tracked her to these woods. I don't know why you swore not to return to them. That seems to be pretty heavy in the concept of the game, though. Probably a lot of the mystery you'll be solving as you search for your daughter as well. Oh, and there's monsters. And number 12 is Unholy. Not an entirely dissimilar base concept. You're a mother in search of her abducted child. However, this one is a little bit more fantastical. There's one city left on a desolate planet, and all the humans in the world live in this city. It's divided into castes. You're supposed to entirely avoid people above your caste. This is apparently tied into the game mechanics or some degree of stealth in this game. There's an amnesia style sanity mechanic apparently. And obviously, although there's not fire everywhere, it has a very agony like look to it, which I mean, if they make a good game that has that kind of evocation of feeling in the aesthetic, I'm good with that. People would even ask the developers about how much it looked like agony. And they said, well, we saw agony. We're not going to make the same mistakes as agony. I don't know, there's some controversy over whether it will just be the same kind of game. Honestly, it sounds like a combination of a few different types of things to me, and I definitely do like the look of it. It was originally going to come out in 2019, however, they delayed it and still haven't announced a specific date, but say it will be coming in 2020. At number 11 is Paranormal HK, which is a Chinese horror game that really gets atmosphere right. There is no English dubbing, but that's okay. You don't actually need English. The game does not require you to understand Chinese to play it, which is very good, of course. Basically, what happens is a crew of, for lack of a better term, supernatural YouTubers go to film inside a walled city in China. Members of the crew begin disappearing, and one decides, I'm gonna get the one that I care about out of here as soon as I can. That was basically the point of the game. This is an absolutely beautiful game on top of being not so scary, but a lot of the locations actually make me want to just linger, except everything about trying to do something like that is incredibly stress-inducing. It's more or less one of the stealth horror games where you're trying to avoid being killed by something weird. And when I say weird, I mean weird with this game. It's out on Steam now. It's supposedly going to be out on PS4 at some point, but all we really have to go on by that is that they said something about it last year. At number 10 is the sequel to The Forest, Sons of the Forest, which promises to be an aesthetically, at least, definitely scarier game than the previous. The mutants in the forest this time around don't have eyes. It's awful looking. I fully suspect nightmares. It's just the type of thing that would do that to me. But the setup for this is quite different. You're on a helicopter to go fight the mutants, planning an apparent all out attack on the forest with a paramilitary group. Helicopter crashes. You have to survive. I think that that sounds great, actually. It provides a slightly more directly conflict slash action oriented reason for the game to be happening. The original plot of a plane going down and searching for your lost son isn't bad, but I feel like this scenario has a little more potential to just sort of throw you in the deep end and make you feel helpless. We don't have a release date for Sons of the Forest, but it is supposedly coming this year, so keep your eyes peeled for more info. At number 9 is Once Upon a Time in Roswell, a psychological horror that sees you investigating the disappearance of a family in 1947 in Roswell, USA. It weird. Essentially, the game is told through the eyes of somebody looking into it. There are flashbacks. There are terrifying otherworldly slash supernatural slash maybe alien things going on. It is Roswell after all. And if there's one thing this game definitely gets right, it's a sort of frantic atmosphere that it has. This is one I've been keeping my eye on. Once Upon a Time in Roswell is coming in late 2020, apparently. At number eight is The Outlast Trials, a four-player co-op version of Outlast. 
Honestly, that sounds like a pretty cool idea. Translating the mechanics and aesthetic into a four player co-op game. Honestly, that works for me. We don't know exactly how much will be retained from the single player games, but we have to estimate quite a bit. Instead of a camera, you've got night vision goggles, which is probably for the purpose going to make a little bit more sense. The game is set in the same universe as the other games. However, in the Cold War era, essentially you're part of an experiment you and three other test subjects have to outlast. I'm guessing there is definitely more to it than just that. However, I'm also guessing this is maybe geared more towards creating some type of an eSport. I wouldn't be upset with that, of course. The Outlast Trials is coming sometime this year. And number seven is Paranoid, a game about a man who has lived in isolation for years, suddenly having to deal with the outside world. Patrick, the protagonist, inherited an apartment from his deceased parents, became very mentally ill, very addicted to substances, and his only living relative is his sister, who disappeared 13 years ago, who has called him and decided to pay him a visit. Honestly, there's a lot of personal conflict that could be set up here, but this game describes itself specifically as a psychedelic horror game, which could be, in theory, extremely interesting. Obviously, the idea is that this guy's been living in isolation in some sort of psychosis for a long time, and he's having to interact with the outside world again. There's a lot of stuff in screenshots and trailers that we've seen that definitely puts us in a is he imagining this, is he not type situation, and I definitely like that. Paranoid is TBA 2020 at the moment. At number six is World of Horror, a game that came out back in February. We're highlighting this because it is early access. The game isn't technically out. We've got an early access version of it. It's very cool though. It's a one bit roguelike, as in it's black and white, and that's literally, it is literally black and white. For being literally two colors, it is quite scary. It has turn-based combat in it, I mean, honestly, it's something that just goes so well with itself. It just works really well. I definitely recommend playing it now. Obviously, it's an unfinished game, but it's cool as hell. World of Horror is out on Steam Early Access. And number five is Little Nightmares 2, the sequel to the 2017 puzzle platformer horror game that, in my opinion, did such a great job with atmosphere and suspense is worth just telling you to play now. It's available on Switch. It came out in 2018 on Switch. Little Nightmares 2 is a direct continuation of the events in Little Nightmares. Probably one of the most charming aspects of the first, and I have to imagine one that will enter into the second, is that this game manages to fool you so many times into thinking things are safe just because of how the game looks. It uses its aesthetic to create so many surprises, and I cannot wait to play another one. We don't have a specific date for Little Nightmares 2, but it's coming sometime this year. And number four is Remothered Broken Porcelain, a sequel to Remothered Tormented Fathers, a game that garnered quite a bit of controversy, but was praised for its art direction and atmosphere. This one a separate story, but still existing as part of a trilogy. Broken Porcelain sets you about investigating an inn that apparently has some, well, secrets to say the least. Remothered was also a pretty darn good stealth game, so to see them progress these elements, it would be good. Remothered Broken Porcelain is coming in the summer. At number three is The Last of Us Part Two, which, as you know, is one of the most anticipated games in a very long time. The Last of Us is a beloved title. We kind of all regard this as a really big hallmark in horror on any video game platform. It's not only graphically really in-depth for the time, but it also tells a very human story and isn't afraid to show us imperfect characters. And also, it scared the living hell out of me the first time I played it. It's a game that's just so damn good at setting an atmosphere. I can't wait for more of it. Honestly, I think we've all wanted to know where the world went after the end of the first one, and I will be playing Last of Us Part Two when it hits May 29th. And number two is Amnesia Rebirth. That's right, another new Amnesia game. Amnesia, of course, sets so many of the standards in the current horror genre. At any given time, there's a bunch of games in development that directly borrow from what Amnesia accomplished, and graphically, this looks amazing. It takes place in the desert of Algeria. You don't know why you're there. You don't know where you've been. And, oh, everything's terrifying. Of course I will play that. Amnesia Rebirth will be hitting in the fall. We don't have an exact date, but that's not a long time. And finally, at number one, I'm probably most excited about this, so it's well-placed, Resident Evil 3, the remake. Now, if you played the original three Resident Evil games, 
and you played the Resident Evil 2 remake, you know what they did in a labor of love for Resident Evil 2. It's not exactly the same everything. Some things were streamlined and in my opinion, made a little more sense. Resident Evil 3 is a game that takes place both before and after Resident Evil 2. Giving us this remake, in my opinion, is awesome. Resident Evil 2's remake is just vastly superior to most other games. It's a great game. And I'm looking forward to Resident Evil 3 that way. My favorite three Resident Evil games are the originals. So to be getting them again in a manner that holds up much better, I'm loving the hell out of it. That is hitting on April 3rd. That is not long at all. And we're going to be occupied with it here. Let's just say that. Couple of bonus games for you. First, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope, which is a new entry in the developers of Until Dawn's anthology series, where you will be trapped in an abandoned town called Little Hope. Now, each of the new games in this series are in some way influenced by real world events. Now, that doesn't mean that they actually resemble real world events, but I think the Until Dawn developers are extremely talented. I look forward to this. And then Scorn is our next one, although we don't know for sure that that's coming this year. It could. We've got our fingers crossed. It's definitely a different game, but we thought it's worth a mention. You basically have to traverse a big techno organic place that's made up of steel and organic things like skin and bone and sinew. It looks kind of like a Nine Inch Nails or Tool album cover from the 90s, and I'm completely there for it. Also, there's Those Who Remain, a new psychological thriller about a guy named Edward who's having an affair he wants to end. He quickly gets sucked into the town that he's meeting someone in called Dormant, which apparently exists directly on the split between the fabric of reality. Those Who Remain will be hitting pretty much every platform in June. That's all for today. Which games are you going to be playing? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.